Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Today I'm going to test another X99 motherboard, which is called Chinsha X99 GT. The motherboard looks very similar to already tested Chinsha or Klisa X99 D4, but it's still slightly different. So let's start with the CPU socket. This is LJ2011 version 3, Intel Xeon E5, V3, V4 CPUs, as well as Intel Core i7 CPUs are supported. The motherboard has two slots for DDR4 memory. It is possible to use several registered DCC memory modules, as well as desktop unbuffered memory modules. The memory works in dual channel configuration, the same as Chinsha or Klistra X99 D4. Additionally, on the motherboard you will find one PCI Express X16 slots for the GPUs, one PCI Express X4 slots, which can be used for expansion cards, one M.2 slot for Wi-Fi cards, and another M.2 slot for PCI Express SSDs. For the front panel you will find everything you need, and this is USB 3.0 header, USB 2.0 header, here we have some debug LED and a COM port. I'm not sure if the COM port works, because I don't have anything to test it with. Audio connectors are over here. Additionally, you will find clear CMOS jumper over here and the BIOS chip. The BIOS chip location is quite convenient, and if you manage to break your motherboard, it will be pretty easy to connect here at the uh, external USB flash programmer clip to restore your motherboard. Unfortunately, four SATA 3 ports are having exactly the same location and direction as on Klisre X99 D4 motherboard. This means that if you install dual slot graphics card into PCI Express X16 slots, these two SATA 3 ports are blocked and you are not able to use them. The motherboard power connector is located over here, while CPU power is located over here. I personally prefer when CPU power is located over here, but on Chinsha X99 GT the CPU power is located over here. Now let's take a look at the back side and see what we have here. The back side is almost identical to Klisre and Tinsha X99 D4. The only difference is that the place which was occupied with the two extra USB 2.0 ports on the D4 motherboard is now occupied with a CPU power connector. So here we have two PS2 ports, two USB 2 ports, four USB 3.0 ports, one gigabit Ethernet port and a very simple and basic audio. Now let's take a look at the VRM zone, and here we have six phases power delivery to the CPU. A bit later I will take off this radiator and take a look at the components used in the system. The radiator itself is kinda small, but it's not tiny. For the fan connectors there are just two of them, both of them are 4-pin, and they are located over here, one next to the other one. You will not find any other fan connectors on the motherboard, nor 3-pin, nor 4-pin, only these two. Ok then, I guess that's all we can see from the motherboard appearance, now let's go to the detailed specification and the test results. After checking Tinsha X99 GT motherboard specification in ADA64, I was unpleasantly surprised. The motherboard is using Intel B85 chipset. All previous X99 motherboards from China I have tested were using Intel X99 or Intel C612 chipset. It's the first time ever I see Intel B85 chipset on LJ2011 version 3 motherboard. Intel X99 and Intel C612 chipsets support natively USB 3.0. For Intel B85 chipset though, Chinese have added one extra USB 3.0 controller from VIA. I don't really like this solution, but a bit later I will validate how good USB 3.0 ports are working on this motherboard. Jinsha X99 GT uses Realtek RTL8168 or RTL8111 as Ethernet controller and Realtek ALC662 5.1 audio controller. VRM or CPU power system consists of six phases. Each phase consists of two components and each component's name you can see on your screen. Unfortunately, I was not able to find any meaningful information about these components in Google. If you know anything, please leave me a comment down below. When I received my Tinsha X99 GT and tried to do some stress testing, my system was rebooting and crashing into blue screen of death. First I was blaming the motherboard and thought that this is a crap motherboard, but after a while I have decided to take off the VRM radiator and take a look at the VRM system, and I have figured out that the thermal pad was not applied correctly, and one of the components did not have a contact with the radiator through the thermal pad. Thus it was overheating and that's why the motherboard was crashing. After reapplying the thermal pad so it covers every component, the motherboard was working stable even with the Xeon E5-2678 and Xeon E5-1650 V3. Jinsha X99 GT is slightly smaller than the standard M80X motherboard. 
It has sights of 180 to 240 mm. MATX standard is 244 by 244 mm. Now let's move on to the test results. USB 3.0 works, but the transfer speed is lower than expected. Most likely it's the external via USB 3.0 controller to be blamed. USB 2.0 and SATA 3 are working as well. M.2 slot works as PCI Express 3.0 X4, PCI Express X16 and PCI Express X4 slots are also working. Fan headers are working with no issues, rotation speed of 4 pin fans can be adjusted, 3 pin fans are unfortunately working at 100% rotation speed. I did not identify any sound quality issues, and network port works as well. Unfortunately, Tinsha X99 GT does not support Windows Sleep mode, but Linux is working with no issues. I have tested Ubuntu 2004. Booting from NVMe drives also works, but in the BIOS you will not find any RAM timing configurations. VRM thermos or CPU powered delivery system is rather poor, dedicated fan is required. With my Enterprise Intel CPU cooler, which blows air through the CPU heatsink straight onto the VRM heatsink, the maximum VRM temperature I was able to measure with my external thermometer was about 80 degrees Celsius. After one hour stress test with the CPU Z using E52678 V3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. Thus, if you would have some kind of a standard fan which does not have a direct air blow onto the VRM zone, your temperatures would be even worse. Restore on AC power loss works on Tinsha X99 GT. Unfortunately, you will only have on and off states. The last state option is not available. Usually, most of the motherboards have three options on, off, and last state, where last state means that if you get power loss during computer being on, computer will automatically start itself when the power will be restored. If the power loss happens when the computer was off, computer will not automatically start itself when the power is restored. BIOS chip on Tinsha X99 GT is a standard Winbond W25Q128BV chip. It is locked with the BIOS settings the same as on Tinsha X99 D4 and D8 motherboard. Thus, if you would like to perform Turbo Boost unlock procedure, or just try some kind of other modified BIOS, you would have to go to the BIOS settings and disable the lock. Unfortunately, because Tinsha X99 GT uses Intel B85 chipset, any other BIOSes which I have tried are not compatible. I have tried BIOS from Huanangju X99 F8, Tinsha X99 D8, and Veynada X99. All of those motherboards use Intel X99 or Intel C612 chipset. Thus, their biases are not compatible with Tinsha X99 GT, which uses B85 chipset. The motherboard has three temperature sensors, but unfortunately none of these sensors are indicating VRM temperature. The numbers are going up and down when I'm running stress tests, I have tested with multiple different CPUs, and unfortunately after validating with my external thermometer, I have figured out that the real VRM temperature is not indicated with any of these sensors. Additionally, I can say that Memtest 86 hands at 16%, it does not matter which CPU I use, it does not matter which RAM I use. On Tinsha X99 GT motherboard, Memtest 86 hands. This is rather frustrating because it does not give me an option to test memory using this motherboard. Another problem is that system locks as soon as I try to run ADA64 system stability test. I don't even have to start the test, as soon as I open ADA64 system stability test window, system goes into complete lockdown. I have contacted the seller of the motherboard with these issues and tried to get some help, but it turns out that the seller doesn't even know what is memtest86. Instead, in the response of the seller I have got a bunch of drivers which I supposed to install. To make a clear experiment I have performed a clean Windows installation, installed all of the provided drivers, and tried the same thing again. Unfortunately, it did not solve any issues. Memtest 86 still hands and ADA64 still locks the computer. I have reported it back to the seller and will see what kind of answers I will get. With this motherboard I have tested a bunch of different CPUs. Xeon E52620V3, E52620V4. First, I thought that using B85 chipset will have compatibility problems with the V4 CPUs, but as you can see, Xeon E52620V4 works with no issues on this motherboard. I have also tested E52678V3 and E51650V3. 
Unfortunately, on Chincha X99 GT, it's not possible to overclock Intel Xeon E5 1650v3, even though it has unlocked multiplier. Intel Extreme Tuning Utility also not working on this motherboard. It's important to mention that this motherboard has CPU C6 state disabled by default. With the CPU C6 state disabled, the CPU will not be turbo boosting to its maximum frequency. Thus, if you do not plan to perform Turbo Boost Unlock procedure, or you have a CPU which does not support this procedure, you have to go to the BIOS settings and manually enable CPU C6 state. If you are planning to implement Turbo Boost Unlock hack, which works on this motherboard with no issues, you can inject FFS drivers right into the BIOS, then you shall not bother about CPU C6 state. With the Turbo Boost Unlock in place, CPU C6 state has to be disabled. Well, well, that's all I need to make a conclusion about Tinsha X99 GT. Right now you can buy it from AliExpress for around 57 euros, and from the pros I can name only two. First is its price, second is its size. From the cons, unfortunately, we have a whole bunch of them. Let's start with a too bad CPU power delivery system or VRM, sleep mode does not work, and what's the worst is that the motherboard is using B85 chipset with an external USB 3.0 controller from VIA. The BIOS is also very limited with no run timings adjustments and no CPU overclocking. Assembling quality is rather poor. In my case, I had to remove the VRM radiator and reapply the thermal pad. My score for this motherboard would be 5 out of 10, and please do not buy it. It's better to pay a little bit extra and get yourself something at least semi-decent. For example, Huanonji X99-8M, Machinist X99-Z, or even Chincha X99-D4 and Glissada X99-D4. As usual, I'm providing a Geekbench 5 result taken under Linux, follow the link under the video description and you will get it. For now though, that's all I have for you. I hope you have enjoyed the video, I hope my video will help you select your X99 motherboard, Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, goodbye.